the preacher is going to preach on. Delay is not denial. You may be seated. I got that title last week. Delay is not denial. Uh, the women have always been there, faithfully there, understandably there, lovingly there. The women have always been there. Through the storms and through the rain, they have always been there. When others have put you down, even when you were wrong, mothers have been soothingly there, understandingly there, persuadingly there. The women have always been there. Such was the case of two sisters who loved their brother and who also had a relationship with the master. It's found in the Gospel of St. John. In our day and time, a text is sent, maybe an email or a Facebook note, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when the master arrives, it frustrates Martha. It's kind of disgust Martha. Brethren, I don't think I need to describe to you how the female persuasion acts when it appears as though you are not listening. Y'all gonna try to help me, aren't you? Martha appears to be quite upset with Jesus for she says these words, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Everything seems to be contingent upon that word, if. Have you really, really thought about how many times the word if is used in just an average day? Have you ever thought about how the successes of your plans are contingent upon that little word, if? The Bible seems to be full of ifs. So much of life is built around that word if. It's such a little word, but yet it's such a big complication in our lives. That word is always there. We don't have to search for it. It's always there. The farmer says, if it rains. The bricklayer says, if it doesn't rain. Hillary Clinton said if WikiLeak Wiki and James Coney had not done what he did, she would have won the presidential race. We have people now crying and saying, oh, if I had voted, maybe number 45 would not be the president today. Facts about it. Most of you sitting inside the walls of the church have already thought about what you are going to do on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But let me remind you, in all of the ifs, Christ has already done his part. The plan of salvation has already been signed, sealed, and delivered. Is that right? But the acceptance part of mankind is contingent upon if he accepts the blood of Jesus Christ. The grace, which is a gift of God, is contingent. If one loves the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. These two sisters of Lazarus lived in a little town of Bethany. Bethany was in walking distance of Jerusalem. A theologian by the name of Dr. Roy Field suggested Jesus loved Martha because she was a good housekeeper. Jesus loved Mary because she sat at his feet and worshiped him. Jesus loved Lazarus because Lazarus loved his sisters. Also, Jesus was a frequent visitor to the, to the home of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Dr. C. Walker said that on the day when Jesus declared that he didn't have the economic security of the fowls of the air, nor the foxes of the field, that Martha held a summit conference with Mary and Lazarus, and she suggested to them that they invite Jesus to stop with them since the birds of the air had nests and the foxes of the field had holes and the Creator was, had nowhere to lay his head. Therefore, Martha suggested to them to let Jesus know he could rest in their home. So whenever Jesus had to be in Jerusalem, he never spent the night in Jerusalem. He would spend the day in the city of Jerusalem. But when the evening shades would begin to appear, he would make his way out to Bethany to spend the night in the home of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. 
lesson, Martha and Mary represents two ways of looking at life. I said Mary and Martha represents two ways of looking at life. Mary represents two different concerns. Martha was a realist. Martha was a practical woman. Martha was a down-to-earth woman. She was also a meticulous housekeeper. Martha believed that everything needed to be placed in its proper area. Martha had a place for everything. Martha believed that cleanliness was next to godliness. Martha kept a clean house. Never did she sweep dirt under the rug. She was a meticulous housekeeper. She concerned herself about a clean yard and a clean house. Martha was skilled in cooking. She did not go and get stuff to put in the microwave. She was not only a good cook, but she took delight in preparing meals. In my mind, I can imagine that whenever the ladies were planning a party or a big dinner in Bethany, they would always confer with Martha because they knew that she would make helpful suggestions. You see, it's easy to criticize, but it's another thing to give helpful suggestions. Are y'all going to talk to me? It's easy to find fault, but it's another thing to give give helpful suggestions. It's easy to run other folks' business, but it's another thing to run your own business. Sometimes it seems that folk in the church are so concerned about my business and your business that they miss their Sabbath blessings. What they should remember is sweep around your own front door first, uh, then you just might be able to come around and sweep uh, around minds. Uh, Martha was a realistic person who gave helpful suggestions. Uh, folk knew of Martha's reputation. They had no misgivings about any of Martha's suggestions. Uh, so when Martha says to Mary, send word to Jesus, uh, we don't need a long discourse. Uh, we don't need a long explanation of what is taking place. Uh, it wasn't a message containing when Lazarus became ill. It wasn't a message laying out the gravity of Lazarus' illness. Uh, just tell Jesus the message. Uh, the sisters didn't even ask Jesus to come. It just said, he whom thou lovest is sick. Well, I can understand that message. You feel closeness, and where you feel closeness, there's a close kinship of love. Where there is a close feeling, you don't feel that it is necessary to go and do details. I wish somebody would talk to me. When there is closeness, you don't spend time on details because your thinking is, I am close to that person. This person is close to me. All I need to do is just notify this person and this person will respond. Just a brief message will do. These sisters did not request Jesus to come to them. They just simply said, he whom thou lovest is sick. It was in that sense the message was sufficient. No need to lay it all out. No need to spell it out. Just notify Jesus, he whom thou lovest is sick. But for some reason, Jesus remained in the place where he was. The text doesn't say why Jesus didn't rush to the home of his friends. You know the divine delay is hard to explain. You've read in the Bible where it says, Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Some of you have been seeking a long time, but you haven't found it yet. Come on, talk to me. Some of you have been knocking at the door a long time, and it hasn't been opened yet. It's sometimes hard to understand that delay does not mean denial. These sisters simply sent word to Jesus saying, he whom thou lovest is sick. 
I don't know why Jesus took so long. Uh, he took four days to come. Uh, all I can tell you is he may not be there when you want him, um, but he is right on time. I, I don't know why Jesus took such a long time, but I tell you, God moves uh, in mysterious ways. Uh, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps on the seven seas and rise up on the storm. Well, now Jesus comes to the outskirts of Bethany. Martha received word that Jesus was in the suburbs. As soon as Martha heard word that Jesus was coming, Martha goes out to meet Jesus. It's an unforgettable experience. Mary sits still in the house. I said Mary sits still in the house. But you know, it just, it just looks like that since Mary had been so close to Jesus uh, that she would have been the one uh, or the first one to go out and meet Jesus. Uh, it just looks like since Mary had spent so much time in the very presence of Jesus uh, that she would have been the first to go out and meet Jesus. It just looks like since Mary had heard Jesus' voice so often that she would have been the first to go out and meet Jesus. But Mary is sitting still in the house. And my imagination is telling me why is Mary still sitting in the house? But I hear Mary saying, I do not understand it. We sent Jesus' word that our brother was sick. I don't understand it. Why didn't he come to see about last why I wouldn't feel so bad about it. But when I think about how nice we've been to Jesus and he didn't even show up. Haven't you ever said to yourself when you have had some relationship with somebody, you would think they would at least call me. You would think they would at least come by and see me. Uh, Y'all don't have to talk if you don't want to. Mary said I wouldn't be so hurt about it. Uh, but when I think about how many nights he was in my home. When I think about it, uh, when I gave him uh, rides in my car and food on the table and money in his pocket, and, and he didn't even come uh, to say hi, dog. He could have said bow wow, but he, he didn't say anything. I gave him a roof over his head. He already said foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. But when we sent word to him saying, he whom thou lovest is sick, and he didn't even show up, I can't deal with that. Jesus is ungrateful. Jesus is, 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 is thankfulness. Uh, well, now, it's an awesome thing. Uh, let's look at the situation. Mary is still sitting in the house. You see, being an idealist, Mary couldn't quite understand such things as disappointments. Being an idealist, Mary couldn't understand such practical things as a man getting word about a thing, but just being too busy right then to stop what he's doing to come and see about Lazarus. Y'all sitting there, but y'all sometimes talk about me. Didn't you hear that I was in such and such a Yeah, I heard about it, uh, but I can't get there right now. I'm on my way, and, and you getting mad because the pastor didn't get there right on time when you want. Y'all don't have to talk about it. Uh, but Martha being a practical woman, Martha, being a down-to-earth woman, would say to Sister Mary, try not to feel so badly about it. Maybe when the master received word, maybe he was just too busy at the time. I don't think Jesus meant to neglect us. Maybe he had something else to do. I don't think Jesus meant to misuse us, but maybe when he received the message, he was just tied up into something that he couldn't leave right away. You see, being a worker herself, Mary could understand Jesus being busy with somebody else. Being a worker herself, Mary could understand how Jesus might have become tied up with helping somebody else. Martha said, Mary, don't you remember Jesus saying he may not be there when you want him, but he's right on time. Mary just sat still in the house, but Martha goes to Jesus and said, Lord, if you had been there, our brother would not have died. If you had been there, there wouldn't be a fresh entombment in Lincoln Cemetery. If you had been here, our friends would not 
be grieving. If you had been here, there would not be a cloud of sorrow over this house. If you had been here, we wouldn't be going through this trouble. If you had been here, the unwelcome feet of death would not have crossed in our home. Well, is it all right if I tell you that sometimes it's hard to understand that delay is not denial, especially when you are going through something which you have been praying for for quite some time and it does not happen. Then when I see some things happening now, I know they're happening because Jesus uh, is absent uh, from your life. When I see folks smiling in your face and stabbing you in your back, uh, I know that Jesus uh, is not present. When I see folk kissing on other folk like Judas, I know that Jesus isn't present. When I hear about folks saying the principle of the law is no good, I know that Jesus is not present in their lives. When I see what is going on in the world today, I ought to know it's time to do ministry. I ought to know I don't have time to play. I ought to know that I need to get Busy. When I see people who are supposed to be dedicated to ministry and not to self, I know Jesus is not in your house. But what I like about the God that I serve, if you are a child of a king, he'll make traps out of doors. Yes, he will. He'll make holes out of stepping stones. Yes, he will. He'll make slow pitches out of knuckle balls. Yes, he will. He'll make fast balls out of curves. Yes, he will. I tell you, delay is not denial. Somebody here, you've been waiting a long time to overcome some habit, some issue, and some situation. But is it all right if you just send up one more prayer, you will get the answer to your question. Sometimes if you just send up one more knock, that will open the door. Wait a little while longer for those that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as an eagle. They will run and never get tired. They will walk and faint not while I'm trying to get to my seat. So is it all right if I just cut across the field? Jesus makes a request to Martha. Show me where you laid him. It doesn't matter how long he's been dead. Just show me where you laid him. Martha said it won't do any good now. He's been dead for days. By this time, decomposition has set up in the body. But Jesus responds, show me where you laid him. Jesus said, show me where you laid him. Doesn't matter how much embalming fluid they used. Just show me where they laid him. Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, our brother would not have died. But Jesus says, Martha, you'll see your brother again. Martha says, yes, Lord, I know I'll see him again. I'll see him in that great day when Gabriel blows his trumpet. I'll see him in that great day when time shall be no more, when this old earth shall rock and rear. But Jesus says, wait a minute, Martha. You don't understand what you're saying. Just hold it, Martha. You don't know what you're talking about. Wait a minute, Martha. Have you got any idea who you're talking to? Don't you know, Martha, you have the resurrection and the life standing right by your side. Martha, you have the overcomer of death right here in your presence. Wait a minute, Martha. You have grace. Faith, hope, and mercy. 
in your presence. Well, I can't leave you right here. The one who holds the keys of hell and of death said, roll away the stone. Eternal life when searching in the valley of the dead for just one man. Had Jesus said, everybody come forth, all the dead would have come forth. But he said, Lazarus, Lazarus, you come forth. Jesus called out Lazarus' name. Lazarus got up, and here's the strange thing. He walked, he walked all tied up, but when he got up, Jesus said, loose him. I want you to know you've got some dead issues that Jesus can resurrect in your life if you loose it. You've got some bad issues in your life that Jesus can wipe out if you lose it. Is there anybody up in here who loves the Lord? Is there anybody up in here who said, Lord, loose me? If so, stand. Get on your feet. Say, yeah. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Didn't he start you on your way? Yeah. I'm loosed uh, from whatever situation I have. Uh, I'm loosed uh, from all problems. Uh, I'm loosed, uh, loosed uh, because Jesus uh, is the resurrection uh, and the life. And because of that, I'm able, I'm able to go all the way with Christ. 